again, it's Kit Nicole and I'm back with another Beyond the Box video for Operation Christmas Child. Uh, so today uh, we are traveling to the country of Guinea-Bissau. No, not to be confused with the country of Guinea, which we uh, looked at last week. Uh, Guinea-Bissau is one of the neighbors and one of the four countries in the world that has Guinea in its name. So just to start off explaining the name, uh, the country takes its name from the Guinea region of West Africa. Uh, this was kind of dubbed uh, by the Portuguese. Uh, the word Guinea was in the records referring uh, to Senegal for a few centuries before it finally got split up into the different countries. Um, no one is really certain about the origins of the name. Some believe it's a corruption of a Berber word that means uh, land of the blacks. But again, no one's quite sure on that. And like I said earlier, there's about four countries in the world that bear the name Guinea in its uh, name. Now, the reason why it's called Guinea-Bissau is because Bissau is the capital of the country. And they decided to use the name of the capital to help differentiate itself. Now, before it got called Guinea-Bissau, it was uh, known as the Portuguese Guinea until its independence. And just another sidestep, while the nation was under the Mali Empire, it was known as the Sub-Kingdom of Gabu. Now, the flag of Guinea-Bissau features the Pan-African colors of red, yellow, and green. It follows a different pattern, though, from some of the other countries that we've looked at. So, Guinea-Bissau has a vertical red stripe and a couple horizontal yellow and green stripes. Now, the red represents the struggle for independence. The yellow for the savannas of the north and harvest and the fruits of their labor. The greens are for the forests of the south and livelihood. And the black star uh, represents the people of Africa. Now the land is about 36,125 square kilometers and sits in between Guinea and Senegal. The land itself is actually quite flat with the highest point only being about 300 meters above sea level. Climate-wise, Guinea-Bissau is ranked the sixth worst for air pollution in the world. Besides this, the country has tropical climate with temperatures ranging from 25 degrees Celsius to about 30 degrees Celsius. Monsoon season typically runs from June to October and then is followed by the dry. Population-wise, there are approximately 2 million people in the country. Guinea-Bissau itself, though, has been ranked with the ninth lowest life expectancy in the world, sitting at about 58 years. Residents of the country are called Bissau Guineans, not the other way around, and the country itself contains more than 25 ethnic groups. The languages are Portuguese-based Creole, Portuguese, and Pular. Now, Islam is the official language of the country and is observed by about 45% of the population. Christianity is observed by 22%, animism by 15%, and local religions by about 8%. Guinea-Bissau is one of the few places in Africa where you can still see ancestral shrines around about. The wood-carved totem-like structures are intended to connect the human and spirit worlds together. On Uno Island, the boys must go live alone in the forest for several months as part of a rite of passage for transforming from a boy into a man. The ceremony is called a vaca bruto, which translates to strong cow. There is no set age for this rite to take place, it's just, it's just done when it feels right. Now, schooling is compulsory from ages 6 to 14, but only about 62% actually complete their basic education. Of that amount, only about 55% go on to secondary, where a further 22% of that actually complete it. Because of this, literacy rate sits at around 53% in the country. The biggest reason for this, uh, for this is because of a lack of accessibility, insufficient training of the teachers, and children dropping out due to early marriage and child labor. So the Portuguese arrived in between 1446 and 1447 and used the area as a slave trade outpost. In 1974, Guinea-Bissau gained independence from Portugal following a guerrilla war in 1973. After its independence, the nation was faced with a civil war, several military coups, and the assassination of its president in 2009. 
Before the first military coup, Guinea-Bissau shared a flag, national anthem, and president with Cape Verde, even though they were considered separate republics. The capital city of the country, Bissau, didn't officially become the capital until 1942, when the Portuguese decided to move the capital from the island city of Balama over to Bissau. Balama was subsequently abandoned and has since fallen into a state of decay and ruin. In 2020, the nation briefly had two presidents and two prime ministers following a disputed election. Now, economy-wise, because of the unrest, the country is ranked the 14th poorest and one of the least developed in the world. Over the last two decades, it has become a hub of drug trafficking. But despite that, the country is among the lightest smokers in the world. It smokes the second least amount of cigarettes per capita compared to everyone else. Now, the country's main economy is based on agriculture. They are a major producer of mangoes, cashews, ground nuts, peanuts, palm kernels, and non-filleted frozen fish and seafood. Now, our last few facts here. Uh, Guinea-Bissau does not have any UNESCO sites currently, but it does have one on the, on the tentative list for nomination. That is the Bahagos Archipelago. It contains the saltwater hippos who sit in the freshwater lagoons and, during the day and go bathe in the sea at night just to disinfect their skin. The archipelago also contains the most important turtle nesting site in Africa, from June to January, up to 30,000 turtles come to lay their eggs there. Football, or as we know it here in North America, soccer is the country's most popular sport. Music is also a big part of their culture, with the most popular in instrument being the calabash. All right, so that's all the information that I have for you guys today. I hope you learned a little bit something about this country in Western Africa. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below, or if you learned something new today, also feel free to share. Or if there's something I missed and you think people should know, also, again, drop a comment below. It's there for you. So again, thanks for joining me today. Have yourselves a good day. Happy shoe boxing. I hope you gained a little bit of inspiration on what to pack and what to pray for concerning your shoe boxes. And stay blessed. Bye.